one. Hi everyone. Well, have I got a, a treat in store for you today because I'm going to be talking to Jim Self, who will be known to many of you. I know he's been running a wonderful website called Mastering um, Alchemy for, for many years with a very large group of students that he teaches. But just to give a bit of background to the, those of you who don't know him, he really walks with a foot in two worlds, and I love that. He, uh, he actually holds technology patents. He's the founder of Biomed Diagnostics Corporation. He served as a two-term elected official and vice mayor of San, San Jose in California. And also he was appointed by a US president to be director of intergovernmental operations for the US Department of Energy. That's very interesting, but in his completely other role and other world, He's an intuitive clairvoyant teacher, international speaker, author, co-founder of Mastering Alchemy with Roxanne Burnett. And what Mastering Alchemy does, and it's a beautiful website that's well worth checking out. I'll put the, the links below uh, the video. It offers tools and sort of enhanced energetic skills, teaches you enhanced energetic skills, sharpens your intuition to remind you, it's a remembering to remind you how to step out of the third dimensional um, board game and into the fifth dimensional experience of well-being. And that could not be more relevant to where we are now in 2024. So welcome, Jim. It's a joy to connect with you. Yeah, it's delightful to be here with you. Thanks for the opportunity. Fantastic. So I know you know a little bit about astrology. So where I'd actually like to start is where many of us thought it was a pretty grim time which was january the 12th 2020 we had a very very important conjunction between saturn and pluto and historically when that has happened in capricorn the theme has been an abuse of top-down power and we all know what happened after january 2020 the everything that followed so so jim over to you because i know you've got some thoughts about that yeah, thanks. So one of the things that we want to begin to pay attention to in all of this is there's two dynamics going. There's spirituality is an expansion that's unfolding and it's happening in kind of two categories. There's a segmentation of the light. One aspect of the light is moving into, let's call it the third dimensional game board where we play our life in world the good, the bad, the right, the wrong is. And in that light that's coming into that space, it's all about you can't take your baggage with you on this journey. You have to let go of the you're not OK and I'm better than you and the good and the bad. So it's dissolving that whole aspect of the third dimensional masculine dominated game that we've been playing. The other aspect of the light is moving into this fifth dimensional game board, we'll call it too. And it's all about, fifth dimension is about really one word, well-being. It's all about well-being, co-creation, cooperation, gratitude, etc. But what happened on January 12th in that Saturn-Pluto is it began to open up a new realm, a, a, an octave came into being. It was a doubling of where we were. The light kind of jumped over one layer. And this octave is architecturally structured so the structure of the architecture is very much joy ease buoyancy a lightness and see the thing about the fifth dimension is you can't take your baggage with you on this journey you can't take with you i'm not okay i don't deserve i'm insignificant that's all in the backpack and so as this light's coming into people's space that is be beginning to wake up, that backpack is loosening up also. And so in a way, you're running into, I'm not okay, however you define that for yourselves, that I'm not okay is releasing. It's all coming up to the surface to be let go of. So as you begin to begin, as you begin to recognize you have tools, you have skills, you have abilities, and the most important piece of this, it's all about you. You know, so many spiritual people say, well, I'm going to save the planet and I'm going to save the animals and the earth. Yeah, that's your, that's your puzzle piece, but you can't do it from 
a darker space. I'm not okay. That, so that's pushing on everybody right now to let go of. And that's that first piece that really exploded positively uh, in, in January 2022. So it's so interesting, Jim, talking about the new architecture, because Saturn is the planet that's connected to architecture and building yes. and construction. So it's so interesting. But our experience globally w was, w was pretty grim at that time. But nevertheless, that created an energy from which there were a lot of boomerangs in that people suddenly started to wake up to say this is not a reality that I'm I'm happy to be in and start to form groups um, and, and come together with like-minded others. And that would never have happened without exactly. those constraints of 2020 and, and what followed. Yeah, so this whole progression of events is simply removing layers of unconsciousness you know, most people in the third dimensional game where we all grew up walk around unconscious of being unconscious. <laughs> What's happening is, and it sounds funny, we're waking up and becoming conscious, but to a great extent, we're also becoming conscious of being unconscious. Yeah. All of my stuff is coming to the surface. It's all being let go of. Fabulous. So let's move now, because I know you talked about it a lot on your website what you called Heaven's Cross, which was mm -hmm. March, I think, March 22nd, 2023. And again, astrologically, that was very significant because Saturn moved into Pisces that month, will stay in Pisces till February 2026. And in my videos on Saturn in Pisces, I was talking about one of the themes of that was a dissolution of density, a dissolution of gravity, and a dissolution of our sense of linear time. And yeah. that I think correlated with it. So, <clears throat> so can you expand on that, Jim? Sure. So what, what's happening, I mean, people put all kinds of labels on things and in a way labels are what get in our way. Once we define something as an X, it's an X in our belief system and there's no more room for a Y to happen. So we entered into, we'll call it some timeline crosses. There is a massive opening of light. So rather than label it timelines, if we just look at it as this massive opening of awareness began to come into people's space, they begin to see outside of this limited parameter. It was all of a sudden, it's like, oh, wow, look at all this that's happening. So that heaven's cross kind of opened the veils in people's languaging quite often. But a tremendous amount of awareness is now just sitting right in front of each of us. And yet we don't have the words to define it. For example, there is a whole new color that began to be conscious to people. And I don't have words for it, so therefore I can't talk about it. But one of those colors that's available in this space that just opened up is the color clear. Now that sounds odd, clear, but if you just put color on clear, the ability to use clear to simply do what the word says, clear what's in front of me. And the ability when you change that kind of definition to start looking for what's in this awareness, boy, I'll tell you, you just start to see all kinds of possibilities and opportunities that were not available to you before. And that's predominantly what that Heaven's Cross opening provided from my point of view. Yes, yeah, so interesting because other people I know locally, actually, spiritually minded people were, were talking about that one by one, we now have the ability to kind of pop into a new layer of light. Yes. It was like popping through a cloud. And um, I've talked about this in several videos, but I had an incredibly distinct um, dream. It was very much a third eye dream because the, my third eye is much sharper than my general vision. And um, I walked into a room that was empty. It was just full of pink and peach sparkly, sort of almost angelic light. And there was nothing in the room apart from a mirror on the wall. And I walked up to the mirror and I was just light body. I was just full of light and my eyes were extraordinary. And then I just started to levitate. Um, and then the yeah. alarm went off, which was a shame. But that was the promise, I think, for us all, that we are moving towards the light body increasingly. W would you say that's the case, Jim? Absolutely. It, and in that kind of a dream, what you're doing is, in a way, waking up 
to an aspect of what you already are that hasn't been noticed as yet. And wow. so nice dream for you. Yeah, it was, well, it was, I'll never forget it. It was so pin sharp, but it was, it was exciting for me, but also I think a promise for humanity that this is, this is what we're moving towards now, which is, you know, which is just brilliant. Yeah. So, and then more recently we had these, um, three blue light waves that came in that I think you're familiar with that I interviewed Nancy Rebecca about and on the 4th the 18th and the, and the 25th of November and and also there was something else happening round about the Capricorn solstice as well and all of those seem much lighter energy and more beneficial so from an energetic point of view how did you see those and feel those and experience those Jim? Yeah, that this one is a, a valuable one, but there's one right before that. And it's kind of came in on the summer solstice period of time. And something it, it's with the opening of those veils in the equinox period of time in, in March, consciousness it very much expanded in the summer solstice period. And consciousness presented itself as intelligence, knowledge, and wisdom being brought into your awareness. Now, as these simple words, which are dynamic and huge, but upon that intelligence coming in, in these blue waves, something also was very surprising to me. It really came in one word, and the word was smooth. And it was perplexing. It's like, wait, there's so much dynamics in one word. But as you start to look at that smooth, those blue waves of light just simply began to make an entryway for people to step into this light, these blue waves particularly, which are very feeling oriented, feelings and distinguishing feelings and emotions. People usually don't know what the difference is, but emotions have edges. For, this is not a truth, but just play with this anger, rage, resentment, emotions, love, beauty, gratitude, appreciation, kindness, no edges in feelings. And so this these blue waves began to open up compassion in a manner of speaking that people can begin to apply it in a dynamic, constructive manner rather than it just being a concept of, I, I have compassion for people, etc. This level of compassion has tangibility to it. It begins to have vibration that as you begin to think it or begin to project it, it impacts the environment that you're putting it into rather than a concept, which it has been for so long. So it has practical application as well. Oh gosh, yeah, very practical. You begin to set a room in intentional compassion, the dynamics of the rooms changes. Yeah. And so people are going to begin to understand there are all of these intuitive abilities, their clairvoyance, their healing abilities, their clairaudience. Those are natural states of being that each of us hold that have not been expressed. That's all beginning to open up and begin to be understood how to use these abilities. Yeah, that's my understanding that we are all becoming more energy sensitive quite rapidly. Yeah. And uh, so so from what you're saying, Jim, it feels more feminine. The energy is more feminine, more yin, more receptive, more right brained, perhaps. Um, to... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Good. To... So, so see, that's this energy that's now coming in that just came in in November. A lot of it is more expansion of those veils opening up, if you would. But this feminine nature is coming in very smoothly, very comfortably, very strongly, but not with a push or a force. It's going to be disruptive. Now, that's not the word that most people would have expected to hear right there. But the disruptiveness is into the masculine dominant aspect of not only the world and the governments and et cetera, but me and you, where are, where do we hold this? I'm better than, or I can do this better than that feminine energy is beginning to soften up the opportunity. So this 
fifth dimensional game board, cooperation, co-creation, respect, dignity, alignments begin to be the state of being. Mm -hmm. And that competition and advantage that is set in is a predominant player in the third dimensional space begins to smooth out. So the feminine piece that's coming in also is beyond what most people would be defining it as. It's much more powerful as, and yet it's very kind. So it really is helping to dissolve the, the old patriarchy. The it, old absolutely. And, but to hear that word disruptive, I don't, not destruction. It is going to interfere with each of us individually, if we're still playing the game of competition, advantage, power over. And that's very subtle in many people's space. Yeah, this is this is just so fascinating because, you know, as we move, because I think my sense is also that this can bring a lot of a lot more Kundalini activation as well. Oh, yeah. So but see, that's another one of those words that people have a concept of and can run that energy when they intend to. But Kundalini energy is vast. It's not just a line of energy that runs up the spine. It plays out into these aspects of each one of us. Sacred geometry is something people talk about, but they don't realize that all those platonic solids, the octahedron, the star tetrahedron, the cube, are all around you and they have purpose. And so this Kundalini energy, when it begins to move into those platonic solids, your perspective begins to change. It's like you just begin to turn on that, without going here, that artificial intelligence as we're looking at new artificial intelligence and everybody's being amazed at what the expand of capability is. All of that comes out of your own space. All this Kundalini is doing is beginning to open up that aspect of consciousness, intelligence, knowledge, and wisdom, that consciousness and you align with naturally. So again, disruptive and expansive beyond the limitations that most of us hold as, well, this is what spirituality is. Wow. Spirituality is vast and is very mechanical in the process. Well, that's so interesting. You know, we were talking before we started recording about the, the physics of consciousness, and that's that's really what you're you're starting to talk about here, which is so interesting. Because as I see it astrologically, with Pluto moving into Aquarius um, it, this month on the twentieth, and um, finally in November it will move into Aquarius for twenty years, so that will see many of us out. Um, that is a discontinuous energy ruled by Uranus. A, 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 you know, a quantum leap energy in terms of our consciousness so we'll go in leaps and bounds is my yeah. expectation through yes. these 21 years yeah. and and uh, particularly around april there's some very strong astrology jim as you know around then were you seeing something very special energetically around that yeah how i look at how i use astrology is i look at the energy moving into the future points and yeah. you get these big spikes every once in a while. And this particular spike is not just a spike, it's very explosive in a manner of speaking. And rather than using that word explosive as disrupt destructive, this one is uh, opening up. It's very expansive. It's releasing the magnetic fields that hold so much in place in that third dimensional game. And so it's going to be fascinating because things are just going to be gone or free floating or unattached. And so I'm saying that to each one of us, because you're going to feel this where you're holding on to, I'm not okay. I don't deserve, I'm not a good person that's in the backpack that none of us want to talk about. All of that's going to begin to come to the surface, but in the nature of the game of world politics, world economics, you're going to see massive disruption beginning to unfold. You can't keep playing the game in the game board of the third dimension. You're moving into something all about well-being. And those in that masculine dominated aspect of governments and business and domination over 
combined with the feminine energy that's coming in, it's going to be very disruptive in the most positive of ways if you can step back and stay on your side of your point of observation. Yeah, that's so interesting because you know you're you're speaking astrologically actually. That's you know spot on for for, for the astrology as well because it's it's about big new horizons. It could be galactic connections, but it's it's kind of exploding the old belief systems in the world as as we've known it. So so do you see quite a lot of changes in leadership and government going through that that period or initiating? that period as well. I see a lot of disruption in government. Now, the thing is people grab hold of power and then they don't let go. It's like watching uh, Putin in Russia right now. Everything about Russia is deteriorating in so many ways. And yet here's somebody trying to grab a hold of a, of a belief system and, and keep the power that's going to be challenging because it's got to be let go of in order for the smoothness of the changes to happen. So you're going to see at a world leader level clashes that are going to only drive people into a larger uh, consciousness. It's like watching the Israeli uh, Gaza circumstance in, in this is not a, clearly we understand this is not a new event, but I bet if you looked at the, the the lifeline of that Israeli, Palestinian, you're talking thousands of years of a pattern that is now being disrupted. So you're watching, grasping for power and the complication of what it leads to when it's not smoothly transitioned. So at that kind of, it's almost like a break point, isn't it? In in April, yes. so big, it's a bit, together with the, the total solar eclipse on the 8th of April that's falling right across America yet again. Yeah. You've got yes. the third, you know, total solar eclipse going across America. So um, do you see that there's going to be some kind of a, a split in the collective consciousness and no judgment here because everybody's on their own on their own soul journey but do you see it as a split with some people staying longer in the third dimension and others moving into that sense of expansion oh, the yeah there's no everybody gets on the train at one time right so it's all layers consciousness is all about layers and i mean just look at people's lives People, you know, in in a family, you have people doing very different things yeah. just because their nature is in that particular layer and the other part of the family is a whole different dynamic. Move that into populations and in governments and countries, you're, you're watching all these layers. So you're going to see disruption occurring in the clash of consciousness because a lot of people are arguing for their limitations in that third dimensional game board. I can't let go of this. I'm, I'm so angry at them, I'm never going to forgive. So part of the rules and the structures of the third dimensional game board, besides linear time being the predominant one, which is time is just an application, it's not a truth. But in that third dimensional game, arguing for those limitations, is going to be what slows everybody down. As this opening begins to occur, there's going to be so much disruption. You can't hold on to your lack of compassion or your, your refusal to be in love with yourself. See, that's another one of the big pieces. So many spiritual people say, well, when I, I, I'll get to me when I saw help the earth and when I save the animals and when I do my thing for humanity. That's your puzzle piece. But if you can't give to yourself, you can't give to another That's until you really start to begin to love yourself, be excited about yourself, the ability to influence the direction of that fifth dimensional game is going to be sticky to get to where you want to go. Yeah, it's so interesting because I often say that to people. You can't can't experience love in your reality until you feel it in yourself. You can't experience peace in your reality until you feel it in yourself. So every you know, we live from the inside out, not the outside in. Everything has to come, has to come from us. So well, so this is also for, for all of us that sort of breakdown of our regular sense of linear time. That's also going to be 
extremely disruptive. Heaven knows what that's going to do to astrology. But, you know, that's going to be very disruptive as well individually, isn't it? That we, it's yeah. quite disorientating and we just yeah. have to surrender to it. Well, it's it, when you begin to start to understand spirituality, you know, a lot of people think it's all love and peace and, you know, kumbaya type thing. Spirituality is very mechanical. It, it's, for example, masculine and feminine is not about male bodies, female bodies or psychology. It's really about structure and flow. And when that is out of balance, you have challenges. But linear time is something where you live in the past and you live in the future. You spend very little time in present time examining or com constructing. There's five aspects of present time. It presents five different ways when you start to look at the, me the mechanics of spirituality. Once you get into present time, then you can change things. But when it's like I'm looking in my past to determine where I'm going in my future, and I'm holding a whole backpack full of, I di they didn't approve of me, or I'm not okay because, simply what you're doing in linear time is looking to the world to validate you being okay. Yeah. And how has that worked out so far? <laughs> so the minute you can begin to recognize I'm, I'm in the world, but I'm not of that world, you begin to take back your seniority, your power, your ability to now in present time choose because in past and future, you don't have room to choose. You go into reaction. And so when you start to understand the mechanics of the rules and structures of the game, it's just simply looking at something nobody ever told you, the ability to begin to take your own individual power and step into this octave and begin to see who you are is what you're really being requested to do in present time. Know yourself. So that your power as always comes from that still point. Absolutely. The present moment. So the more we can practice that feeling of, of, of still point, of just complete decompression of our energy, bare feet on the grass, meditating, breath work, candle gazing, whatever your method is, just to drop into that state of peace and present. Yeah. And it's as simple as just beginning to have the concept, I like me. Now, you know, can you, I'm talking to the audience, can you say, I like me comfortably in your own space? And as simple as that is, you get a lot of hesitation. It's like, yeah, but no, no, I like me. I'm okay. I'm pleased with myself. That creates a vibrational feeling in the heart, simply where you exist. See, you, you we don't leave, we don't live in the heart. We spend time moving away from that heart. I need them to tell me I'm okay. But the minute you basically like yourself, all of a sudden everything opens up in possibility. And that's what this smoothness is all about. You know, just simply step out of the game. Yeah. And it's not that complicated when you allow yourself to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm often sort of coin phrase, phrases and one of my phrases has been starve out the scary, love in the good. Just starve right. it out, you know, starve out the energy that, that you give it because to give something energy is an act of creation in itself. You're, you're quantum entangling with what you absolutely do want, not want more of. So it's yeah. that simple, really. Yeah, and it's that Esther Hicks and Abraham law of attraction is, it's so simple, most people don't understand it, but it's simply what you put your attention on, the universe who absolutely adores you is going to give it to you, but the universe doesn't speak in English, French, and Spanish. It speaks in vibrations and so if i'm not okay and i put my attention on not okay universe isn't going to interfere with you the creator creating what you put your attention on and so living you know i think we're really going to get there and this is what you obviously excel at but i think we are really going to get this idea of energy frequency vibration and that we are e electromagnetic beings living in an electromagnetic soup as it were, and how yeah. we interrelate with that and a better understanding of how our thoughts create our emotions, create our reality. We are really going to get this for the first time, possibly ever, because it's such a unique evolutionary opportunity that we're in the, in the midst of, isn't it?
Yeah, and it's very simple. You know, Jesus talked about um, the meek shall inherit the earth, but Jesus spoke in Aramaic. And when you translate the word meek in Aramaic to English, it means simple, just simple. And so the ability to basically start to recognize a simple shift. You know, for example, if I said, which feels better, angry, anger, rage, resentment, or joy, laughter, happy? You know, there's no, it's like one's heavy and one's light. What if you could just recognize you could create a platform to step out of the third dimensional game and begin to just stand on a platform, let's call it certain, capable, and happy? Pick your own three words, put them together in a geometry, a triangle, and then simply feel them, not think them. Your whole world changes when you feel versus think. Yeah. And that, that's what Mastering Alchemy has been about for years. Yeah, this is music to my ears because I so often call myself a, a proud bumpkin, um, you know, because my real joy is going out in the morning and being in the woods and talking to the trees and the wild ponies and donkeys yeah. and going down to the stream where the dragonflies are, you know, that it's it's that childlike innocence and simplicity that actually feeds my soul and i can feel an energetic coherence coming in with that it's yeah. so simple you know it's, it's absolutely elementary but there's a nurturing from the kind of grounding aspect of it but also a coherence that comes in from the trees from nature that sort of bathes any any angst or or worries absolutely. and so nature is going to be a real touchstone for us, I think, going forwards in these. Yeah, I mean, you just lives. get out and go for that walk that you just described and say hello to the flower, pay attention to the tree, be amazed by the color of the rock. I mean, literally just intentionally put your attention there yeah. and you stepped out of the third dimensional game board. Yeah. See, that's the well-being of the fifth dimension. You never get kicked out of the fifth dimension. You simply turn your attention to what you don't want. And there you are. Yeah, it's it's beautiful because then we can start to reconnect to that sense of oneness that the Lemurian beings apparently had, that we are yeah. just, you know, a fractal in the in the whole flow of of nature and consciousness. And we get that sense that it's almost like pantheism, isn't it? That just everything, the rocks are alive, the crystals are alive, the snails, you know, just everything is a living being that is one part of one consciousness. Yeah, and it's very much what Nancy Rebecca was talking about. It's very much what Vito, Vito Austin was talking about. You start to get in this alignment of well-being and the water begins to be, in fact, the water is the first representation of that consciousness of intelligence speaking to you. Yeah. That's dynamically alive right now, the water within you. But the blue beings that uh, Nancy Rebecca was talking about, that's this whole guidance into just loosen up. It's very simple. And <laughs> those beings are very much at everybody's uh, point of awareness. I mean, they're, it's not just Nancy being able to see them you see them, you feel them, they're there just to be said hello to. And the results are quite dynamic as you get, begin to play with them. Yeah, and th this sounds like it's, and I certainly feel it, and I know many people do, that this is coming in quickly now in 2024. Very quickly. Very really quickly. quickly. People are making, you know, jumps almost on a, on a daily basis. And I, I'm kind of very aware of that myself. You know, our, our dreams are gonna become much more dynamic and, uh, and, and we are really stepping away from something that feels archaic. And I, my sense is almost that the past will go to dust for some of us. You know, it will barely exist. We'll just, it will just go to dust. We'll barely remember. Yeah, when you start to play in that concept, see, to a great extent, we all have a story. And what we've done in any, every present moment, we add to the story. Every second adds to the story. But if you're perceiving it from that, I'm not okay and they don't approve of me, that's the lens that you're looking through to see your story. Absolutely. And so one of the things that in Mastering Alchemy that has been most beneficial is people have concepts of things like an aura and it's like, oh, well, I have an aura. Well, take it to the next step. What does that mean to you? So you don't start and stop anywhere, but if you basically figured out that your aura is 
where you stick your arm straight out and turn your palm towards you, that's basically plus or minus where the aura is. If you pull your attention inside that sphere of light that you're creating, calling an aura, something really dynamic happens. You all of a sudden begin to see that the noise out there that was bothering me a minute ago is noise out there. It's not noise in here. So the moment you begin to define the edge of your aura as a point of delineation, not a wall, not a keep out, not a protection, just simply be on your side, all of a sudden, an enormous amount of the noise, the fear, the resentment, the anxiety goes away. Yeah. Define yourself and you begin to define your reality in this fifth dimensional space. Yeah, I, I love that because I often talk about just stay in your own bubble, generate your own bubble yes. of joy, yeah. gratitude, peace, compassion. And that's what you are beaming, broadcasting out to the world to alter the quantum wave structure out there for the collective. You're correct. Absolutely. And even, you know, when I started up um, an incredibly simple 15 minute meditation on a Sunday evening, seven o'clock UK time in the evening, which is 2 p.m. EST. And people just join energetically, no Zoom links, no nothing. They just imagine that they're holding hands with everyone else in that meditation yeah. in the world and, and dream in you earth. Just feel those emotions of, of love, joy, peace, compassion, gratitude. And people, quite a few people recently have written to me with the same experience that as they come together, holding hands, a sort of a vortex of light starts to appear and they're like Sufi dancers. And the, yes. Sufi dancers, you know, and the spinning of the, of the Sufi, they start to spin and create this bigger and brighter light, bigger, brighter light that spreads all over the earth. And it's interesting that there's that this telepathy and energetic connection because people who are writing to me and telling me this are all over the world. You know, they're not in the same yeah. geography. And I think, gosh, that's thrilling. You know, we're doing this for free at home, sitting on our sofas for 15 minutes, and we are creating this force field of love, this force field of light that is altering the quantum wave structure to help the collective. So we don't have to go into battle because actually, we're, in a sense, we're energizing the old world, aren't we? Whatever you resist, yes. we're energy. We've got to do the kind of Buckminster Fuller thing of stepping beyond the hamster wheel of horror to create something much higher, much more loving, way better than all that we've lived through in our lives. I know many. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just go back to like yourself. Be pleased with yourself. Find that and that you giggle, that you laugh. You know, it's like I'm pleased with myself, and then kind of be amused. You're stepping into that unified field of consciousness, that octave we talked about earlier, which is now architecturally structured in joy and ease and buoyancy. There's a whole change of gravity that takes place in this dynamic. It's that same 15 minute meditation. It's that same, hello, I see you. And the most important word on the planet, the most powerful word, hello, I see you. It's just simply in that space where we all begin to be in an alignment and you know what they know and they know what you know and it becomes very synergistic, one and one becomes three and we begin to be in that higher road. It's not complicated, but you can't take your baggage with you on this journey, which keeps looking over your shoulder saying, I'm lesser. You cannot be not okay. Yeah, It's yeah. impossible to be not okay. We work really hard at trying to be not okay. <laughs> you know, it's like wearing a pair of shoes that don't fit in an orange and a green pair of outfits and then wondering why people look at you strange. You cannot be not okay. It's impossible. So go for the walk that you know Pam goes on. Enjoy yourself. I like me. And yeah, I think you're, you're, you're dragging the baggage of your past into your future. And that's, you know, yeah. it's never gonna, that's never gonna work. So so it seems that Jim, and you're the again, you're the expert on this. That in whether it's my little free meditation on Sunday evening, or mass meditations, or I'm in a group that we between 100 and 200 of us get together every solstice and equinox and have a meditation on a sacred place. Um, you know, whoever is doing it all over the world with the same intention to dream in new earth that is really building a kind of energetic tsunami, isn't it? Every single time it's getting stronger. And, and yeah. that earth consciousness is already here. I mean, it's already building. Yeah, people are just waking up into who they are. 
And it's really that simple. And, you know, there's 8 billion people on the planet and a great portion of them are waking up. They're, they're, everybody has their puzzle piece. And if a puzzle piece is not put into that puzzle, it's the whole is not whole. Yeah. And so that's what we're waking up for. You know, and we're beginning to recognize also the emperor doesn't have any clothes on. And instead of arguing with the emperor, it's easier to walk away and leave that emperor naked and powerless rather than continuing to give up power. And that's what people are beginning to realize. It's going to take a little while. You know, between now and 2027 is one period, but going into 2035 and 40, there's a lot of disruptive elements that are going to occur that are going to move people into co-creating together. That is going to be very dynamic and fascinating to watch. Yeah, so I think that's certainly I'm in a group and you can and these groups are happening all over the world already that people are coming yes. together already. They're buying land, growing food. They are coming together as families, families of frequency all over the world. Yes. So so so, Jim, talk about and I know it's something that you've you've mentioned in previous videos, but talk about the new human that we are stepping into, this new light body, this new human that is a remembrance of our previous skills and, and gift. Share some of that vision for, for the viewers. So it's happening in two ways to a great extent. So let, let me use artificial intelligence as a little tiny chunk. It's not good, it's not bad, it's technology. That's it, there were no labels put on this. But one of the things that you wanna know about Art of, uh, about intelligence. Intelligence is not artificial. It's consciousness speaking in evolution. And so you have two waves happening. We were talked about all through this third dimension, fifth dimension. For those of us playing in this fifth dimensional game, consciousness, the expansion of awareness, the expansion of the veils, the ability to begin to turn on your telepathy, your clairvoyance, that's all going on. And you are simply stepping into a space that's becoming aware of being aware. Now, it's not read in a book and it's not a lecture that somebody gives. It's all of a sudden you're going to find yourself going, huh, that's interesting. There it is. That's it. You know it instantly. You can't unknow something that you this saw or know. So for those of us playing there and not pushing against, you're going to find this dynamic unfolding in ways that is just fabulous. It's just like, wow chat GPT on the other side, it's all of a sudden that gives you permission to, to step into a space to ask a question. You get answers that you never had available to you. So on the artificial intelligence side, consciousness is presenting in forms of technology to the humanity that's still playing third dimension and trying to get out opportunities to begin to move forward. You're going to see technologies that's going to turn out to be a little earpiece you put in your ear and you're going to talk to it. And it's going to talk back and forth to you and everybody's going to go technology. And then all of a sudden, at some point, you're going to take the earpiece out and there it is talking to you anyway. Consciousness being alive within your space that you can simply say, how does this work? People are going to find something that's really remarkable and it's very out of the box. The ego is absolutely important to you. The ego is a part of the higher self. The ego is now returned to a great extent to the higher self. But the whole purpose of the ego was to kind of walk alongside of you and play with you. It's like teach you, give you opportunity to express yourself. How does this work? And you would say, well, what did you learn today? And you would start talking to it. That aspect of the higher self is coming back into consciousness, coming back into the individual, coming back into through technology, where people need technology to believe they can excel, expand and grow. So consciousness is talking, intelligence is talking in some very dynamic ways if we listen. And that's the space that we're watching this new human begin to develop into a space where it's aligned with well-being and that intelligence that you're watching in these large language models and artificial intelligence just talk to you, that's all already inside your capacity to understand yourself. It's just putting back the wiring. There's something called the eye of Horus in people. It's a necklace that people wear or it's a mystery school. 
No, it's not. It's the alignment of all of your spiritual psychic abilities being turned back on in one place. The pineal center, the sixth chakra, the, the, um, all of these aspects of the brain are going to let you start to simply know answers rather than figure out answers. That's the hu new human that's unfolding. It's very exciting to be part of that experience. So essentially what you're saying, Jim, is we are reigniting our inner spiritual technology and the outer technology can act as jump leads for that remembrance. Yes. Ultimately, it's going to be natural and organic and, and, and evolve and, and remind us that, that these, yeah. these skills were all already all, all here. And in simplistness, we're just simply beginning to rewire, recreate, realign, remember ourselves yeah you see you came down here to play a game and people i make a joke about it but it's not a joke you said to the creator <laughs> you know i want to go and the creator said okay well, understand that you're going to go down there it's going to be dark you're going to forget who you are you're going to forget who i am you're going to put a bag over your head you're going to wallow around to try to find your way home and you went hot damn this sounds great. And the creator said, okay, and here you are. And then it's like, poor me, I've lost. There is no creator. I don't know who I am. That's what's going away. You're taking the bag off your head. It's mechanical. It's simply there's tools and skills and enhanced abilities that if you just step back and begin to recognize, I can do this differently than I've been playing in the game. And that's this whole new human beginning to remember the old human, the one that played the game in Atlantis and in Lower Moria and seven other places that you don't even remember all upon the earth. Oh, it's an exciting adventure we're stepping oh, into. It's just amazing. So do you see people living longer and in better health, Jim? So this is a, the simple answer is going to be yes. And it's all about you making it happen. It's not an accident. It's not you step into some light and like going to the beach. And now I'm living to 200 years old. <laughs> that period of living to 800 years was very real, but it's in a very different chapter of the book that we're playing in. Here, you weren't meant to be 800 years. You were here to play this game, to figure out a couple of the pieces, take the bag off your head and come back and do it in the next lifetime. We're, for so many, we're in the last lifetime, but that's a very misleading statement. It's you're about to step into a different vibrational field than the lifetime of the third dimension. And in that context, you're going to find something called the etheric body. Most people call that the astral body. The etheric body is the name of the new game. It is that body that you live in endlessly in perfect health. It's that body that you're going to bring into the human experience and play the game absolutely differently. Wow. That's part of the whole mastering alchemy curriculum. How do you build that light body, turn it on. That's kind of what we do. And that's available to us right now. Oh, yeah. ab absolutely. Now, some assembly required. This, <laughs> is not a, this is not a gift that you sign up and get a certificate in two weekends. You know, this is, this is, spirituality is a work in process. It's all about you doing. It's 100% for me and 100% service to others. And you've got to step up and participate. There's, you've got to open the door. Nobody's going to open the door for you. Yeah, but it's wonderful that you are in the role because I think we, we are all needing to be in service in some way. We're all needing to help humanity, whether it's just helping your neighbor carry her shopping in or whether it's on a much bigger scale as you are doing, Jim. You know, that is a very important piece going forwards with the Aquarian energy. And, and you're doing some fabulous work out there. And I know you have a huge number of students following you and have had for many, many years. So, yeah. so is there anything else that you'd like to, to add about where we are now in 2024, how we, how we navigate other than what you've already said to leave the viewers? Well, I, think this, I think this April timeframe is going to be, again, disruptive. And I say that both... I say it mostly positively, 
But if you're holding on to those limitations, just be aware that it's time to let go of those limitations. I think you're gonna see the end of the year begin to make some shifts in the third dimensional game, in the game walking around, really disruptive. You know, American politics, European politics, Russia, Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, Sudan, you're going to see lots of challenges to the status quo. You're going to see things like cryptocurrency come into the new dynamic as a reality of changing the whole monetary system. That will happen. But there's a whole lot of people that are invested in it not happening because I have mine. I don't want to let go of mine. That's that masculine domination that's going to begin to fall apart. And the more they argue for those limitations and restrictions, when it breaks, it's going to be challenging for everybody in the physical space. But that's kind of a hello to pay attention. Pay attention. These things are coming. Step back and ask yourself, what do I want? And where am I in relationship to what I want? Two questions. And then move towards what you want. It's not the car, the wonderful life, the 2.3 kids and the white picket fence. It's what do I need to be able to step on my own platform of I like myself and watch the train go by without getting run over by it. Yeah. It's all about present time. Yeah. The, the way I've, I've always sort of seen it and expressed it is that we can, if we are in fifth dimensional consciousness, we can observe what's happening in the 3D world and a lot of the volatility, but we're not completely consumed and enmeshed by it. We're kind of one step back. We have some bubble wrapping from the worst excesses. Of it. Because we're living from the inside out, we haven't given away our power to external authorities to be to be buffeted quite so soon. Yeah, you, you say it very well. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, this has been a wonderful discussion, Jim. I've, I've really enjoyed it. And I know your students really adore you as a as a fabulous teacher. So, you know, just thank you. Thank you for everything you're doing for the world. And you've talked about that unique puzzle piece and you have a very large piece of the puzzle, I think, as we move forwards in 2024 and, and beyond. So thank you so, so much. And, you know, I hope everybody enjoyed it out there in viewer land as much as I've enjoyed it with, with Jim. So Jim, thank you for your time. Very, very kind of you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Let's do it again sometime. Over yeah. A one, of... Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.